Okay, the, the parasites we're going to talk about is, um, uh, these are all blood or tissue purgers. Well, I should qualify that, uh, you know, not just blood, but some of them are tissue uh, purgers as well. Uh, we, will, uh, we will talk about two forms of trypanosomiasis, the African trypanosomiasis, trypanosoma brucei, that causes sleeping sickness, or, uh, you know, and is prevalent in uh, Central South Africa, tens of millions of people are aff affected. And um, the major reservoir for this is um, domestic um, um, hoofed animals. So horses can be uh, infected, and the deers are reservoir. And most importantly, cattle get infected, and there is a more economic burden uh, than human suffering with, because of these organisms. Uh, primarily in Central Africa. We'll talk about the, the distribution and um, other features later on. T. cruzii, or the South American trypanosomiasis, and it is a um, causative agent for Chagas disease. If you are blood donors, any of, most of you, which most of you uh, are, uh, you will see on the form, have you ever had Chagas disease? And I sometimes chuckle because how, what percentage of population would really know what a Chagas disease is, you know, if they have had it? Um, but that's what is the common name for this um, uh, infection, Trypanosoma cruzi. And there are millions of people that are affected, and not only the people, but there are reservoirs for this, dogs, domestic dogs and possums, uh, raccoons, all sorts of um, wild and domestic animals can be infected, can be carriers for this. Uh, Leishmania, Leishmaniasis, pr uh, primarily Mediterranean, the tropical form, uh, but also um, India, Pakistan, they have had uh, those uh, uh, Near East as well. Uh, Leishmania brasiliensis um, and others, they cause mucocutaneous Leishmaniasis, they're more in South Africa. And Leishmania donovani is also in Asia. Okay, it's seen in Asia as well. And with our troops traveling abroad, more and more cases of these things are seen. You will see some of the epidemiology of these um, infections in later slides. Okay, uh, the other organisms, plasmodium, four different forms of plasmodia, um, those four different species of those, um, uh, a cause malaria, and it's uh, one of the major causes of parasitic infection, you know, blood infection. And some of it is often fatal if not diagnosed properly. Okay, so that's the, um, there's a lot of concern for this particular organism, both WHO and our uh, military as well as our uh, um, NIH uh, is, has, is spending a lot of money on research uh, on this organism and development of vaccines. Uh, tr um, toxoplasma gandhi, again, it is, uh, a, causes to toxoplasmosis, somewhat opportunistic. It can be dangerous in, in a normal individual as well, and we'll talk about that, what are the conditions one has to be um, careful. I'm sh some of you, I'm sure, would have heard about it, and we'll, we'll talk about it later. Okay, Babesia microti is another organism that we'll talk about. It's North America, parts of America, North America, and Europe. It is um, found. Uh, it causes babesiosis, and we'll talk, uh, see the symptoms. So coming to individual organism, trypanosomiasis. African trypanosomiasis, also known as sleeping sickness. T. T brucei rhodesians, Rhodesiensi is, um, and then the other one is um, T. brucei gambiensi, the uh, central to eastern part of um, Central Africa, and the brucei uh, gambiensi more towards the west coast. But these, these um, uh, organisms don't carry passports or need uh, immigration or emigration visas, therefore, they can be found across the borders as well, of the, those countries that are in the center. And occasionally, they are seen north and south as well. Our 
we are not at risk unless a person has been. And there have been cases, uh, several cases in this country as well as Europe, where the person has been to those areas or lived those areas, particularly missionaries. So, uh, and they get um, infected. Um, or, or soldiers, um, military, missionaries, Peace Corps workers are obviously at risk if they are traveling those areas. Then American trypanosomiasis, as I said, trypanosoma uh, uh, Chagas disease, and that's caused by trypanosoma cruzi. So three names you've got to remember, trypanosoma brucei, gambiensi, rhodesiensi, and then trypanosoma cruzi in terms of trypanosomiasis. Or also, and also know Chagas disease and sleeping sickness is the sort of common names for those. The organism generally is sort of a spindle-shaped, undulating. It sort of moves by just undulating movement, almost like a fish. Uh, I have seen the organism because I had some in the lab, and uh, uh, some of I was infecting some mice to study their immune responses. Okay, so that's the general shape. And here is a sort of map of... Um, the distribution, geographic distribution. You can see Rhodesia is somewhere around here. Okay, that's where the Rhodesian Sea will be found, more towards the eastern part of the Central Africa. And then Gambia Sea, Gambia is somewhere over here, and it will be found on the western part, and you can see that there will be overlap in between. Okay, it, is, it has got two morphological forms depending on whether it is in the uh, infective um, host, uh, in a vector, infective vector, or the, um, the um, human or mammalian host. Um, this is trypomastigote form, um, and this is referred to as epimastigote. And the difference between the two is that the attachment of the flagellum is more sort of trip, a posterior region of the uh, organism in the case of uh, blood form. And in the case of um, the vector form, uh, it is more towards the anterior and anterior of the nucleus, actually. Okay. The um, flagellum is attached to the body most of the way, uh, leaving a little bit uh, free flagellum for movement. Epimastigos, this is also referred to as crithidial form. So if you see crithidial, um, know that, uh, that it is epimastigot. Uh, Trypamastigot is trypanosomal form, also referred to as trypanosomous form or Trypomastigote. Okay, this is the vector. It's known as tipsy fly, TSE, TSE, tipsy fly. And uh, it's found, of course, in those areas, um, so, so, you know, the Central Africa. And the, um, the, uh, the, the humans are, or the uh, ungulate or hoofed animals, ungulate, you'll see hoofed or in a divided hoof. Um, don't think all horses have divided hoof, but um, you know, the uh, hoofed animals, really. So it can affect horses. Deer is depicted here. But horses and um, camels, if they're there, or the, uh, cattle, they can all get infected. OK, humans get infected by, uh, by the, the bite of a um, kissy fly while it's um, taking up meal. It has the organisms in the salivary duct, and uh, it can uh, infect the humans. Is it in the salivary duct, or is it in the esophagus, or the, the gut? No, it is in the salivary. OK, so it can infect the humans. OK, um, symptoms of African trypanosomiasis, depending on what the stage after the bite or after the infection they are. At the bite site, there is a skin reaction, and that is a non-pustular, itchy, and painful chancre, okay, meaning thickened, hardened lesion. Itchy, painful. However, the very important point is 
or an important point is that it leaves no scar. So if you have been bitten and for a few, you know, while you're traveling in Africa, that part of the world, and um, it's a little painful or an itchy, and you think it's like a mosquito bite or anything else, it has left a, uh, it has caused uh, a painful chancre, but that disappears in a few days, and there's no scar, so you don't remember. If the physician thinks, well, do you, you know, uh, or if you're taking history, they won't. They may not remember whether they have had it. Okay, so that's the parasitic. You know, after infection, there is a parasitic state when the uh, in, uh, the the organism is migrating to lymph nodes and blood circulation, lymphatics and blood cir circulation. And of course, when the lymph nodes are involved, there will be lymphadenopathy. And in the, when the organism is in the, um, in the circulation, there will be fever. And the reaction, the immune system will produce cytokines, of course, that will cause general unwellness, latitude, sort of laziness, insomnia, lack of sleep, edema, uh, also a feature of infection, an immune response, and a lymphadenopathy, painful swollen lymph nodes. Particularly important is one of the lymph nodes the, 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 at the back of the neck. I can't remember what the, his, the proper uh, uh, anatomical name is, but um, there's a back of the, we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, CNS, it can migrate to CNS or heart. It has the predilection of going into the heart. And in both cases, of course, it will cause neurological problem. Uh, that may uh, be represented by personality changes, sort of reclusiveness, um, you know, uh, lack of uh, interest in many things, uh, you know, the withdrawal from the uh, social circle, um, lack of uh, a tremulous speech, uh, mental retardation, sleepiness. Sleepiness, that's why it's called sort of uncontrolled desire to go to sleep. And, um, and um, cardiac failure can occur in, in this case. Now, sleeping sickness refers to as a sort of permanent sleep or prolonged sleep um, that may or may not occur depending which organism is infecting. And we'll sort of distinguish that in a minute. Okay, here's the lymph node swelling. You can see probably from the back as well, or certainly on your own monitors, uh, on computer monitor, and um, is um, referred to as winter bottom sign. And here's the sort of one picture of a coma uh, that is a result from, of course, the infection of the CNS, and the person sort of goes into coma and does not wake up, does not come back, and that's why it's referred to as sleeping sickness. Now, um, T. brucei, pathology, inflammation, um, uh, and uh, inflammation due to the presence of organism, various cytokines being released, and also type 3 hypersensitivity because it produces antigens, uh, it has antigens, and that uh, they are shed off in the circulation in the body and host does uh, produce an immune response. And, and um, so there is type 3 hypersensitivity. So the presence of organism and type 3 hypersensitivity are the two causes of pathological um, changes. CN, it can cause the organ, presence of organism can also cause damage to the CNS. Um, the antigenic change I'm going to uh, describe a little bit further uh, in a second. Okay, I think I've got some slides off it. Antibodies are not protective due to antigenic change. They, one would also see polyclonal activation of B cells. Polyclonal activation, you already know it, and that will result in immunoglobulin elevation, concentration of immunoglobulin. So elevated hyper IgM and even IgG levels are increased. 
complementemia will be from immune complexes. Every time that you've got persistent immune complexes, you're going to have hypercomplementemia. And if they are not being cleared, which in this case I think they are cleared pretty effectively, um, they, they will be renal involvement as well and other blood vessels, uh, characteristic of type 3 hypersensitivity. The organism also causes immunosuppression, and that is not totally understood what the mechanism is, but one of the mechanisms is induction of uh, activated macrophages, activated RE cells, that in turn uh, cause Im immunosuppression by producing immunosuppressive cytokines. So it does cause immunosuppression, and that will result in secondary infections as well. Okay, the, the, what I was referring to, antigenic ch ch change, I will describe. It has a very, very thick, diffuse, very tightly arranged um, glycoprotein that is called outer coat, okay? And that is what the antigen is. One of the features of that antigen is A, it makes it uh, complement resistant, resistant to complement mediated lysis. Because remember, complement mediated lysis occurs when there is a, you know, lipid membrane exposed. That's where the complement components, lytic components are inserted. Having a thick coat is protected from complement mediated lysis. That's one of the uh, methods. But that thick coat has got antigenic features. And it induces an immune response, and as the immune response is increasing, the number of uh, organisms will go down, but some of those organisms shed off that antigen and they start producing another antigen. Same glycoprotein, but its, uh, it's structure is slightly different, and therefore it's not recognized by the previous immune response products, meaning antibody. So this is, I think, in animal studies, this uh, cycle, but it happens in humans as well. The, in the laboratory, it has been shown that, okay, clone A is injected to infect the animal. It, there will be parasitemia, and it will peak. And during that period, of course, there is also production of antibody. Okay? Here, uh, okay? Production of antibody, and this clone will be eliminated, but a few of these this clone animals will change their coat and become a clone B. Okay? Same parasitemia and same elimination due to an immune response against this, and as it is going down, antigenic change will give rise to clone C. And D and F and G and H, up to 100 have been reported. And it has the mechanism, we do not, it's out of scope, this particular class, but it has the molecular mechanism to change, to bring in a new cassette of um, antigen in a producing gene and produce that gene, okay? So that is one of the major problems that why the immune system cannot get rid of it. And also, for all sorts of, you know, despite all sorts of efforts to produce a vaccine for animals or humans, has been unsuccessful. Yes? Uh, yes, it would, of course, it will. But at no stage you are really parasite free. Okay? As one clone is going down, you have got some reduction, as you can see, but the other the clones are, yes, and it will cause you know, symptoms as they, another cl this clone disappears and new clone is emerging. And those will be reflected in um, relapsing circulatory system when the organism is in circulation, meaning fever and chills and fevers. Okay? So, there, yes, there will be um, some up and down of um, symptoms. Since this uh, is produced from the mice, I don't remember the, the communications of papers that they did monitor the temperature, but I would expect that the temperature will change. Okay. <clears throat> Brucei diagnosis is based on travel history, flybite, you know, 
are and symptoms and a blood smear and CSF uh, finding organism in blood and CSF. It's not always easy to find the blood in the blood or CSF. And if one does find in the blood, this is the blood form, trypanagus, stigot form, trophozoic form, and that is what one would really see uh, okay, in, the, in the blood sample. Um, if one does not find and one really suspects that there is a, you know, based on history and symptoms, um, uh, one suspects that, one can pass the larger amount of blood, larger amount meaning several cc's of blood, on a anionic resin column where due to the charge of the organism, it will stick to those, you know, particles in that, you know, that column. And if you elute it, you may concentrate that blood. The other poss uh, possibilities, bioassay, um, and th that can be done in the mice. It, the organism, human organism, does infect the mice, and as soon as the mice are infected, there will be enormous number of, uh, um, of these uh, in the blood circulation, and one can de uh, de definitely, and organisms, depending on the organisms, as few as uh, 100 or a few hundred organisms injected into mice can um, produce a fatal um, parasitemia, and the mice died. Dies. Or, you know, EIA, immunoelisa technique, ELISA immunoassay technique for detecting antibodies in the person. Because if the person has been infected, they would have produced antibody, and that can be uh, detected by immunofluorescence using the uh, inactivated killed organisms in vitro uh, on, on slides or enzyme immunoassay using antigens, such as glycoprotein, VSG. By the way, that, yeah, often you will see abbreviation VSG for variable surface glycoprotein, that change in code. And I think I have indicated that in the handout, that abbreviation too. Okay, T. Bruce, I, okay, I, I told you that I was going to compare, give you a contrast, and it is in the notes, of between Rhodesia and C and Gambia and C. Gambia and C is more prolonged infection, prolonged disease, and therefore, while it can cause carditis, it can cause um, um, encephalitis, it is slow-progressing, long-term disease, and more, that's where, why you see sleeping sick, sickness in those, or those, uh, those infected with that organism. Whereas the, or, uh, the rhodesiancy is fast developing, progressing, okay, rapidly progressing, uh, infection, and you see more um, cardiac failure. So before the CNS um, stage can uh, be reached, they die of cardiac failure. Okay? Prevention would be, of course, um, a, no, uh, you know, uh, there's no... Uh, uh, effective vaccine because it changes antigen codes. Uh, so the, the only um, precaution is really control of the vector. And those areas are often at the risk of losing the um, environmental greens and forests. Uh, they are sprayed uh, and they change in the ecology. They are sprayed with um, uh, pesticides uh, to control titsy flies. If you are in that area, one tries best to avoid um, in, uh, the, the uh, insect, the fly bite, the sea fly bite, by using repellents or uh, netting. Suramin and um, pentamidine are the drugs of choice. Suramin for acute infection. Uh, uh, in a, or pentamidine for acute infection, and there's a drug, uh, melarsoparol, which is an arsenic um, um, derivative that's more toxic, but it is used in more advanced disease. Okay, acute with um, suramin, pentamidine, or pentamidine, and then melarsoparol, which is much more toxic, but then one has to really put up with that toxicity for treatment of CNS infection. So that is the, um, uh, the African trypanosomiasis or sleeping sickness um, infection. 
Then I have already emphasized the points that I would like you to remember. Okay? Morphology. Th th those are um, also listed in the table at the back of the handout. Now, American trypanosomiasis is found most of, in most of South America and um, even uh, Mexico. And it depends on the uh, presence of the vector. In this case, it's a um, you know, trimatode or kissing bug is the vector. So you can find the cases. And the cases have been reported. I will show you one case that was reported in, um, in uh, Tennessee. And you will say, well, OK, it's only one case. But it depends on who sees, which one of you sees that particular case. So you should have, again, the knowledge. Not only that, but there is such a lot of influx of people from Southern American countries that uh, they may bring in the infection. And the vector is present in the, uh, in the US as well. And therefore, we may get a good reservoir of that infection. And you will see that uh, how it was. Um, this is the one. Um, this is interesting. The television education of lay population. A mother of an 18-year-old boy in rural Tennessee found a tritomine tri bug. And you'll see the picture of what the tritomine bug looks like. Um, which she said because it resembled a bug shown on a TV. This is General of Infectious Diseases report, so I'm not making it up. Okay? I do make up some cases sometimes, but I warn you of those. Okay, um, a bug uh, shown on a TV program about insect that prey, that insects that prey on mammals. The gut content of the bug were found by light microscopy and PCR to be infected with T. cruzi, Trypanosoma cruzi. Blood specimen obtained from the child in July and August were negative uh, by microscopy and uh, hemoculture, but positive by PCR and DNA hybridization. So the child had been infected. Um, suggesting a low level of parasitemia. A specimen obtained after benzonidazole treatment were negative. He did not develop anti T. cruzi antibodies. 19 relatives and neighbors also were seronegative. Two of Three raccoons trapped in the vicinity had positive hemoculture. So it's not too far away that you might find a rare case. Now, obviously, the physician, whoever treated or saw that patient, uh, knew enough to administer benzonidazole, which, is, um, which obviously cured the person. So, and then this... this um, uh, this, this, um, these last few months, uh, uh, MMWR uh, reported this, another case. In December 2005, a man aged 64 had a heart transplant in February. Now that is why you, you know, it can be transplanted by blood transfusion, and that's why you ask the questions. Uh, blood donors are asked the questions, have you have ever had Chagas disease? And that's it refers to uh, uh, trypanosoma cruzi uh, mediated uh, infection. Okay, a hospital with um, anorexia, fever, and diarrhea of two weeks duration. The T. cruzi in blood and biopsy from heart were obtained, okay, or were seen. Um, the patient had no identifiable risk of, for T. cruzi because the person had never traveled in those infested areas. Okay, um, uh, traveled to a country and uh, for uh, Chagas disease. He was seronegative for T. cruzi antibodies, but positive for T. cruzi DNA by PCR. So the modern methods, you know, like that can pick up the infection. Uh, after initiation of nifertimox, that's uh, the other treatment for, um, um, for um, Chagas disease, um, uh, 
uh, his parasitemia were rapidly cleared. However, in April 2006, the patient died from complications attributed to acute rejection of transplanted organs. Remember, when we were talking about transplantation, you can have delayed rejection or rejection after infections. And the, actually, T. cruzi has been shown in some research to have antigens that cross-react with cardiac tissue. Okay? That I have not got in my, I may or may not have in my notes. And I'm not going to ask you about it just, but, uh, you know, you, you will, just so that you know that there is cross-reactivity. However, in, okay, diet, of, the source of infection tracked the organ donor who tested seropositive for T. cruzi. That was the accident victim, of course, and the uh, antibodies by RIPA and um, 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 uh, uh, tested uh, borderline seropositive. Okay. Obviously, they had some blood sample from him. Otherwise, being a heart donor, he would not have um, uh, been, you know, we could not do uh, serum uh, immunofluorescence or any other test for antibody. He had been born in Mexico. He had been born in the U.S., but had traveled to a T. cruzi endemic area in Mexico. So you don't know unless you suspect, unless you are subconsciously aware of these infections and these critters, you can do harm to uh, a, an individual, um, you know, while trying to do good, meaning transplanting an organ. And it does not have to be heart transplant. It could be blood transfusion or it could be just um, any other organ transplant. And there's no opportunity always to test the, um, those organs uh, for the presence of the organism or presence of infection. Another case, January 2006, there were four or five cases reported, one after the other in um, MMWR. And this is here is another one. In January 2006, man aged uh, 73 received a heart transplant. The patient was uh, readmitted um, in the hospital in February with fever, fatigue, and abdominal rash. A thin blood smear revealed T. cruzi to Pemascos, and blood cultures were positive for T. cruzi. The patient had no identifiable risk factor for T. cruzi infection, meaning born in the infested areas or having traveled to the infected, infested areas. He was seronegative, but uh, PCR positive for T. cruzi, indicating recent infection. The patient's rash and parasitemia resolved after 10 days of um, nifertimox treatment. Serial endomyocardial biopsies did not reveal uh, repanosome from the biopsy, of course. Uh, and he remained um, seronegative by immunofluorescence for T. cruzi. The patient died in 2006 from cardiac failure. Who knows? whether that cardiac failure was for what reason, okay? Um, the source of infection was, uh, was the organ donor who had been born in El Salvador and was residing in L.A. at the time of his death, okay? Tested positive for T. cruzi, or for his death, actually, his own death. And they tested the other, the, of course, they have got to track since it's a uh, cadaver organ, they have got, they have got other organs transplanted into other individuals, and you've got to follow those individuals. I can't remember. I, I, I would have remembered if they were, any of them had become positive, but they will be followed for a long time. Uh, morphologically, it's no different from um, Trypanosoma brucei. There is a trypamastigote form or epimastigote or chrysidial form. This one is in the uh, blood circulation. This one can also be found in the blood circulation as well as um, in um, infecting bug. And th this one is, I'm sorry, this one is in tissue culture, okay? And this is the one in, found in pseudocysts. We'll talk about those pseudocysts in a minute. 
And I think this is actually is in the bug. It is in the bug, this one. Epimastigoat or critical form is the bug. Critical form, critters. That's where you associate that it will be in the bug. Life cycle, um, there are a variety of reservoirs. But humans get infected when they get bitten by a uh, reduvid, re, general name is reduvid bug or also referred to as kissing bug because it tends to sort of uh, be attracted towards the warm breath area on the face and bites there and that's why it's referred to as kissing bugs. And the humans get infected, the organism from the uh, bite site migrates to the um, lymph nodes from there to the circulation in the muscles, it may form pseudocysts. It can get infect the gut mucosal tissue, gut tissue, or um, even CNS. And it has a predilection for uh, neuronal cells as well as the cardiac cells. And some of the carditis may be because of the presence of the organism, and some of it is also because of the cross-reactivity between antigens, trypanosomal antigens, and uh, cardiac tissue. Reservoir, a variety of animals, include domestic as well as uh, wild animals, from rodents all the way to possums, and um, uh, possums, uh, uh, raccoons, armadillos, etc. Okay, raccoons and armored, uh, and possum. Okay, so it's, a, 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 you know, it's very hard to get rid of uh, the organism. And if you are interested in those diseases, you pick up journals, and you'll see a lot of uh, news as well as cases from South, Am South, Am South America. It is a, a rural disease. It's not a urban. But the dogs... Have no, again, don't uh, follow the socioeconomic taboo of uh, traveling to, from poor area to rich areas, and occasionally there will be rejuvenated bugs in the effluent areas as well. Um, these bugs have been found as far as Maryland, Tennessee. You saw that the note there, uh, south, southern part, southeastern part of the United, southwestern part of the United States also has those cone nose or kissing bugs. Okay, this is a typical example where there is sort of a stone stacked and a thatched roof or, uh, or straw walls and thatched roof, and there are no mosquito screens or on the windows. If they have window shutters, you're lucky, they are lucky, and that's the sort of living conditions it can, um, it can get into the house and it tends to bite people at night. It can fly, but it's a more crawling, creeping bug. And it crawls in, resides in those recesses in these walls, and at night it will come out and, uh, for a blood meal. Okay, transmission is through bite. I'm going to just uh, go through the, this uh, slide and then stop. Um, transmission is, those are the scientific name, trichoma. I would not, I would not ask, distinguish between these different organisms, but trichoma, rodneus, and panistrongulus, if you just remember those words, you'll be doing very well. Trichoma is the general word, you know, um, uh, or kissing bug or uh, cone nose bug are the other two terms used, and that, those are in your, uh, in your handout. And they, they, the, here's a picture of that, sitting on a skin surface area. Cone nose because the sort of, you know, the head and uh, anterior, the, the um, stinging um, organ uh, sort of make up like a cone. And um, I have already told you why it's called kissing bug. And here is a scenario, a bug sitting there, and it's taking a blood meal. And while it is um, taking blood meal, it also has a very, very um, rude and bad-mannered habit of um, defecating. 
And if you think of it really, if you're asleep and something bites me, you know, bug bites you, or what's the first reaction? Huh? <laughs> no. In your face, you just go like that and that, right? And that smears the fecal material that contains the uh, organism into the open skin, broken skin, and organism enters the uh, tissue and circulation through there. Okay? Um, the symptoms, depending on... Oh, no. I promise you that I'll take a break after this. Okay, we'll continue tomorrow. No, tomorrow you do... Yeah, tomorrow. Tomorrow's Saturday, and you're not...